What's going on guys, Dots here, and today I'm bringing you an updated version of my Node War gear and optimization guide for beginners in BDO. I made this guide about a year ago, and since then quite a bit has changed, and so because of that, this guide was definitely due for an update, so that is what we're going to be doing how to optimize your character for tier one node wars, what kind of gear you want, what buffs you want, and what changes you wanna to make to your add-ons when hopping into a node war environment when there's capped stats. But before we do get into that, I do just wanna thank today's sponsor, Ewin Racing. I've been using an Ewin Racing gaming chair for my stream setup for a long time now, and I absolutely love it. It's got all the things you would expect from your gaming chair. It's got a lumbar pillow, it's got a neck support, you are able to move the back up and down. Of course, you were able to ascend and descend with an arm on the side of the chair. And you are also able to move and adjust the angle of the armrest, which can be really, really handy depending on where you have your mouse positioned. The build quality of the chair is really, really good. It's extremely comfortable. And I'm able to sit in this thing for hours with absolutely no issue if you want to pick up a chair for yourself i personally have the champion model you're able to go onto ewin's website and shop their current available listings they have some current deals and ongoings on their homepage. you can then look at their list of gaming chairs as well as their new line of gaming desks and find some specials of what they have on for sale you can pick anything up from their store for 30 percent off using code dots at checkout and clicking the link in the description below all right guys now that we are back from the ad break let's actually break down how we're going to want to set up our characters for node wars so the first thing we need to know before we start making any changes, what are the caps for the node wars? So when you open your map and click the cross swords in the top right, you're going to see the node war map. Now, again, we're for this guide going to be going over tier one and tier two nodes. So, for example, if you go to like the northern plain of Serendia, this is a tier one beginner node, and it shows you those stat limits there on the right. Now, a green stat means that you are past the cap. So you can see, for example, the AP limit is 245 and my AP is 559. The number that is shown there on all of those stats listed below includes not only your gear, but it includes your buffs and all of those different things. So, you know, I'm going to be going over the buffs in a later section of the guide, but when trying to kind of optimize your character for these stats for the first time, I highly recommend getting all the buffs that you're going to be using in a node war and then taking a look at these stats and seeing what changes you can make. Because assuming you are well over the cap for whatever node you're fighting on, whether it be a tier one beginner, a tier one intermediate, or a tier two node, right? You're going to be able to sacrifice maybe certain pieces of gear to be able to get stats that are not capped. So for example, you guys saw my AP was well over the cap for like a tier one beginner node. So I can sacrifice certain pieces of gear that are essentially doing nothing for me. Like for example, my moonlit cap potion necklace, I'm not gaining any of the AP from this since I'm well over the cap. So I can replace it with something like the Kaya necklace, which you can see here in my bank. Now this gives me 10% extra back attack damage. Now that's, you know, a stat outside of the confines of the caps. So getting something like this is a way to essentially squeeze more damage out of my build. And, you know, going from this cap potion necklace, which has 30 AP down to the Kaya necklace, so I'm losing 23 AP, but it doesn't matter because that AP is not even being used anyway. So that's kind of the whole concept behind the gear that we're going to be, I'm going to be showcasing to you guys today. So as you start to uh, equip this gear, double check the caps, make sure you're still over them, and then equip more gear kind of as you go on. So the first thing we're going to be looking at, like I said, is that Kaya necklace. You can get that from Mandolf in Trent. Uh, so if you do not know where uh, Trent is, so basically what you could do is go to here. You could type in uh, Mandolf. He will come up, right? He's the armor vendor in Trent. Click him and it'll path you to him. So Trent is all the way over here. Uh, it's a bit south of Calpheon. You go there and you can purchase the Kaya necklace from him, as well as the Chimera earrings. This is another piece of gear you're going to want to get. Not only does this give you additional max resources, this gives you 10% down attack damage. Absolutely huge for Node War. You got a lot of people scoring knockdowns on opponents uh, when you're you know, playing as a big group. So having two of these Chimera pupil gems to basically replace your earrings with is going to be a really good thing to have. Now, pretty soon this what I'm about to say is not going to matter, but at the time of making this guide, it still does. The next thing that you're going to want to get is you're going to want to replace your sub weapon with an ultimate Rosar 
sub weapon. Now, the reason for that is that you get that 10% special attack extra damage. So you're going to want to buy a Rosar weapon for whatever your offhand is, put an ultimate reform stone in it, and then you're going to get that all special attack damage. I recommend either duo or try. I have a Ted just because that's what I ended up buying back when I bought this. Now, I'm sure it, very soon what I just said is not going to matter because that all species special attack damage is going to be getting added into your Kudum shield or your Nuver or your Black Star. So you're not going to need the Rosar because that's going to be in your actual boss piece. So if you see that line, that additional effect on your Kudum or your Nuver or whatever, you can disregard this. You already have that stat. You don't need it anyway. Now, past that, another thing that you can do is you could also get a red coral rings. Red coral rings are really, really nice because they give you 50 max stam. You know, being able to have extra stamina to make sure that you're mobile, you can move around. Really, really important, obviously, for node wars. So getting two, you know, like duo-ish rings will be able to help you with getting additional max stamina. Now, for tier one node wars, the cap for your health is 5,000. If you are well below that health cap you could also look at something like the rainbow coral ring which gives you a hundred max hp now basically what you want to get your health to prior to node war is 4500 because your health goes up by 500 when node war starts so once you get to 4500 you get the additional 500 which brings you up to that cap of 5000 now in tier 2 node wars on the other hand I am going to recommend for many people to actually run these duo uh, rainbow coral rings because health in tier two node wars is uncapped. And so having a big HP pool is going to be really, really helpful because damage is a lot higher in tier two node wars. And so having that extra health is going to increase your survivability by quite a lot. So I do think that the rainbow coral rings are definitely a good option for tier two node wars. Now, so far, we've gone over a bunch of accessories that you could use to kind of augment your build. Uh, what about artifacts and light stones? What can you do there? So what I'm going to recommend that you do for any tier one node war is you're going to want to run max stamina artifacts or like basically any other artifact that you're going to use here really doesn't give you a lot of benefit. I mean, I don't think you could really take benefit out of almost any of them. Um, if you're below the HP cap, obviously, you can use a health artifact. But I would say for most people, the stamina artifact is going to be what you want to run. Um, and then obviously in tier two node wars, very similar to kind of the whole concept with the rings, I would recommend using the max HP artifact for tier two node wars. Now, you have a couple of different lightstone combinations that you can use for um, tier one and tier two node wars. Now, I would say like the the really cheap one that is really good is going to be called Stomping. So I believe that is Rage, Lungs, Marked, and then Ground instead of the Frenzy one that I have. Um, basically, it will give you 5% down attack damage. Um, it, you know, my class, I play Guardian, so my I'm basically at 100% crit almost all the time. So I felt that getting the extra special, all special attack damage from the Frenzy was really, really good just because strikes are insanely expensive for the Lightstone. So skill master is another really good lightstone combination that you can use but if you want to like you know spend money best in slot what i want to run you're going to want to run something called crocodile's tooth uh, crocodile's tooth gives you down attack damage as well as critical hit damage for that you're going to want to use two predations one ground and one strike strikes are really expensive and hard to come by so like i figured if you're going to be using that you're probably not watching this guide anyway but for most people i would say the stomping or that skill master is going to be a really really good option now gems wise the biggest thing you're going to want to use your gems for is to help you hit caps such as 5k health for tier one node wars as well as resist caps now i can show you guys my personal gem setups for tier one and tier two node wars again check your stats against the caps as you do these so for tier one node wars, I run four hand Macalods. This is because they give you a shitload of stamina and they give you ignore all resistance. So you're able to, you know, completely ignore your opponent's resistances and get those knockdowns, get those grabs. So I run four Han Macalods. In addition, I also do run two Magic Crystal of Infinity Absorptions. 
in tier ones. This recovers one HP on attack. It's a very nice bit of tankiness. So anytime you, you deal any sort of damage, you are gaining one HP. So I do run two of those. I also do run two corrupted magic crystals for an additional 10% crit damage. Again, the damage reduction in all AP issues don't, it doesn't help me really. The main thing here is for that crit damage. And when you use two of them, you're getting an additional 2% crit hit damage. So these double corrupted is very, very good. I also do run two Magic Crystal of Infinity Siege, giving you 10% uh, Siege Weapon Evasion Rate. Very good for tankiness and Node Wars. Highly recommend running these. I also then do run one Jin Histria. This is just for a big boost to my stamina. And then I run one final uh, Crystal, which is going to be an Elkar to basically give me an additional 10% Ignore All Resistance. So that makes sure that in a Tier 1 uh, Intermediate, I am having the maximum amount of ignore all resistances so that I, you know, my opponents when I'm fighting will essentially have no CC resistance against me. So that is what we run as our crystal setup for tier one. Now for tier two, it does change a little bit because again, there's no health caps. A lot of the other caps like resistances are higher as well. So for tier twos, I run four Han Hooms. This is to get again, big boost, boost to HP as well as a boost to my, my resistance. Cause again, the resist caps in tier twos are much higher. Um, in addition, you can now actually do special evasion rate in tier ones. That's a 0%. So you don't use any of these, but in tier two, I do believe it is at 20. So you want to run uh, optimally gin special evasion crystals. I They're super expensive. So I just run bonds um, almost as good but way cheaper. So I run two bond special evasions. Again, the two corrupted magic crystals for the same reasons I just stated. Again, the two magic crystal of infinity siege for the reasons I just stated. And then as well as the Chris, two crystals of Elkar again, to make sure that I'm able to get, um, you know, that full resistance penetration against my targets. Now, in terms of your, um, your alchemy stone, what I personally recommend for offensive classes is to run Vels if you have it. Vels is really, really good. Gives you a lot of offensive stats. But if you are a more defensive class, like a frontline class, I highly recommend the Perilla Star that comes from the Seasons. The Recover 1 HP per hit and the Stamina is extremely noticeable in Tier 1 Node Wars. At least I personally think it is. I've done multiple Node Wars with a more offensive Alk Stone on my Guardian or the, the Perilla Star. Personally, I feel way safer fighting with Perilla just because the amount of defense that comes from this Al uh, this Alk Stone is absolutely massive. So if you do play a more offensive or excuse me, if you play like a more frontline main ball unit, I would definitely consider the Perilla Star. I think it's a really good Alk Stone. But if you do play something more offensive, you know, your assassin, you know, something like that, then I would obviously Vel's Heart or that Sharp Alchemy Stone of Destruction, if you don't have Vel's, is going to be your best bet. In addition, I know it's going to suck. I don't like to do them either, but do your logs. Your logs and the stats from the logs will all also help you reach those caps. So definitely something to do. So now that we have gear and stats out of the way, guys, let's actually get into buffs. So what buffs do you need when you are going into a node war? So what you're going to want to try to do is get these buffs. I try to get them roughly about uh, 15 minutes before node war, especially the this the first one I'm going to talk about. That's your villa buff. Uh, your villa buff comes from your tent. Obviously, if you do not have the pay to win tent, you're going to need to go to a villa over somewhere in media, get a villa pass and then go to a villa and then actually get yourself the buff. But assuming that you do have the tent, you can just, you know, set it up about 15, 20 minutes before war. Try to do it sooner than, rather than later. Don't wait too long because then you'll get locked out because I, I believe it's like 10-ish minutes before war. You can't get Villa anymore. Um, and as you can see, Villa gives you plus 10 EP, plus 10 DP, 200 max HP, 10% all resistances, and 5% ignore all resistances. So very, very good buff. Something you're going to want to make sure that you grab. You also are going to want to have an exquisite cron meal. This gives you a whole host of benefits, which I will let you read if you do want to read them. But the exquisite cron meal is going to be your meal of choice. In terms of your draft, I'm going to recommend the giant's draft because of the extra all special attack damage at the and plus the stamina. But really, it's that all special attack damage is what we want from this. They're absolutely huge. I recommend buying as many as you can and really having them on every push. I used to be pretty lazy about these and be like, I would only, you know, use these on e-buff pushes and if I wanted to be Gucci. But like, as you can see, they're only 1.9 mil. They're really not that expensive. And 
once I started using these of like basically every single time I die, like afterwards, I my damage it just skyrockets. Like 10% damage is a lot. It's it's really, really, really noticeable um when you actually have it. On top of that, you want to make sure that you grab plenty of health and mana potions. Now, what I'm also going to recommend that you guys do is keep some health and mana potions, not only in like a storage, but also in a um also in your marketplace. You crank through health potions in node wars or you could just be like me and have the infinite health potions and not worry about that but you want to have an overabundance of health and mana potions so that you can refill them as needed in addition you also are going to want to get these things that are called whale tendon potions so whale tendon potions are another potion that you can use yourself outside of your fairy using your regular potions. This gives you a big boost to your health and to your resource. And as you can see, this recovery is nearly 50% more effective if it's used while your character is immobilized. So if you accidentally get knocked down, if you get stunned, grabbed as your health starts to drop, use one of these potions. It's just a huge, huge defensive boost, especially in the beginning of war when you have more health to work with for tier ones. These, these whale potions can easily be the difference between life and death. So definitely make sure you have those. If you can afford them, I recommend using the blue quality ones. But if your budget is a bit tight, you can then use the green whale tendon potions instead. Now, the other thing that you're going to want to go is to a church and get your church buffs. So you're going to want to talk to this guy and get the attack and protections. I just do the 300 minute ones just to cover myself. So you're going to want to grab those. And then those buffs give you all damage reduction plus eight and 150 max HP. And then all AP plus eight and all accuracy plus eight. So definitely go and grab those again. It's just getting these extra stats. It's what allows you to be able to kind of use those, uh, you know, more like really cheesy pieces of gear like the Kaya necklace and the Chimera earrings, right? By padding your stats through these other sources, you can afford to drop a significant, you know, amount of stats off of like, you know, again, dropping my Kaposha accessories and my earrings to be able to use those pieces of gear that give me stats outside of the caps. On top of that, you're going to also want to come to Carolyn here in Hydell. You're going to want to talk to her as close to war as humanly can because she gives you a really good but short buff. It is a 30 minute 10% critical hit damage buff. Absolutely massive. Um, again, it's only 30 minutes though, so try to get that as late as humanly possible. If you notice when you uh, are going for your node war for the first time and you're here in Hydell, you're going to notice that everyone is uh, basically crowded around Carolyn up until the last minute. So I recommend getting her buff as close to the start of war as possible. Um, on top of that, the next thing that you are going to want to get, if you can afford it, this is a luxury item, is going to be Elixirs of the Deep Sea. This gives you not only 100 max stam, but 10% back down in air attack damage. Absolutely massive damage boosts. Um, I don't generally have these as much as I would like. Um, you know, they can be pretty hard to get off the MP. I know they're pro very often pre-ordered so once you have a bunch of metals built up from participating in node wars you could actually spend them on elixirs of the deep sea it's definitely a luxury item but if you can get them it's obviously a huge damage boost so if you can afford it i highly recommend grabbing them and then finally the last thing in terms of uh buffs here obviously want to make sure that your alk stone's running so when you have your alk stone of choice equipped click this little auto use thing so that you can use it uh, the final thing that we want to use here is a house item. So for tier one node wars, I highly recommend the Kalk Swings. That gives you 200 maximum stamina. Definitely recommend that. And then for tier two, I uh, I believe it's this one, the Artisan Special Stuffed Shadow Wolf Head. You want to use that to give yourself some maximum HP uh, for a good amount of time. I clearly need to move that one because I'm either going to sit in my chair or use that. <laughs> um, so you want to get those. Give yourself the max HP boosts just because... Uh, HP is really, really good for tier two. Again, damage is higher, makes you tankier. So the artisan special shadow wolf head or something like that is going to be. Now, the final thing that you're going to want to do is your add-ons. So speaking of add-ons, I'll show you guys again, just because I've been running around Hydell showing you where everything is. You're going to want to come to the dwarf over here by Carolyn. So you come over here. You're going to talk to Kruhan Wormsbane. And he is going to be able to allow you to set up your add-ons. So you just talk to him, you click add-ons, and you can set them up. Now, what you want to do with your add-ons is you want to avoid things like flat stats. You do not want plus or minus AP. 
or DP. You don't want human damage, monster damage, uh, recover MP or WP, like things like that. You just you just don't need those flat damages because again, people are over caps. So if someone is well over a cap and you reduce their DP by 15, it literally doesn't do anything. If your AP is well over the cap and you increase your AP by, by 20, it's not going to do anything. So what you want to go for are percentage-based things. So crit hit damage, down attack damage, crit hit rate, um, attack speed, HP on hit is also really, really good for tankiness instead of like DP because obviously the DP doesn't work. And then bleeds are also really, really good in tier one node wars, especially as health starts to get lower because over the course of a tier one node war, uh, your health starts to drop over the course of the war. And so bleeds become really, really strong by the end of the war. So just to like show you my add-ons, just like as an example, you can see here I have a uh, down attack damage, back attack damage, crit damage, instantly recover that HP, attack and casting speed, uh, accuracy and evasion rate, a bleed, another bleed, more attack speed, more attack speed. So you're going to want to use things like that. Again, nothing flat in these tier one, tier two node wars. Use these percentage based things because again, they will not be limited by those caps and you will get the full effect of those add ons. But guys, looking through my little notepad here, I do believe I touched on everything. I think that's going to cover our tier one and tier two node war optimization guide today. This went a little bit more in depth than my previous guide, but some things have changed. I've also learned a lot more about the game. So hopefully you guys did find this guide helpful. And if you did, I would really appreciate if you smacked a like on it. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, please feel free to leave them below and subscribe for more BDO beginner guides and guardian gameplay. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. I really do appreciate it. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I'll see you all in the next one.